just ahead, there's another edition of the Florida Roundtable, a service of Florida's talk and entertainment networks. I'm Regan Smith, Public Affairs Director of the Florida News Network. And I'm Executive Producer Michael Yaffe. Michael, a pleasure to be with you again this week. Just ahead in these minutes, well, politics, politics, politics. It's a week for political analysis and observation. We are in um, what I choose to call some years the silly season, and I will explain that to you a little bit later on. Uh, If you haven't had your fill of commercials already from the politicians, they're only going to intensify uh, in the next several weeks. So, pull up a chair, put an ear on the radio. The Florida Roundtable begins following these messages. Terrorist acts and shootings are often described as great tragedies. They are not. We live in a world so concerned with being politically correct that they're afraid to call evil what it is, evil. Man's sin nature is as old as the Garden of Eden. Many love to blame culture, poverty, or lack of education and opportunity as the problem. They may have a good or bad impact, but the big problem is sin. Acknowledging our sin nature will show us our need for a Savior who changes us from within. That Savior's name is Jesus. He came to die for the sins of all who will acknowledge their sin. Faith in him strikes a mighty blow at evil. So quit calling man's evil acts a tragedy. They are evil and God hates it. Yet thankfully he loves us in spite of our evil and sin. Jesus not only forgives us, but gives us the want to to overcome evil with good. This is Brian Wright, speaking right from my heart. Black and green stuff growing on roofs or second-story siding? Pick up Wet and Forget Hose In. It's wet and forget, but with a brand-new nozzle that attaches to your garden hose and sprays up to 30 feet. Wet and Forget Hose In easily cleans places you can't reach without a ladder. Each bottle cleans a whopping 2,000 square feet. Get the new Wet and Forget Hose In at Lowe's or visit wetandforget.com for a store near you. When stocking your hurricane kit, include supplies for at least seven days, keeping in mind any specific needs, including medications. For drinking water, plan on a gallon per person per day. Some healthy supply ideas include granola bars, dried fruit, rice cakes, and trail mix, as they're nutritional and also have a long shelf life. And don't forget about your pet's needs, too. This hurricane preparedness tip has been brought to you by Storm Peace Hurricane Protection. This affordable supplemental insurance covers you where your homeowner's insurance doesn't. Visit StormPeace.com for your quote today. This is the Florida Roundtable, a service of Florida's talk and entertainment networks. I'm Reagan Smith, Public Affairs Director of the Florida News Network. And I'm Executive Producer Michael Yaffe. Michael, always a pleasure to be with you in uh, these confines. Politics, politics, politics. Like I said a couple of minutes ago, we are in the middle of this season. But I the silly to, season, yes. as you call it, <laughs> yeah, I, this, I, <laughs> which I, I understand. Yes, I, I started doing that a few years ago, and uh, I think it still <laughs> applies. You know? Yes, uh, if you put these in a book of humor, a lot of people wouldn't believe that it really happened. So, <laughs> but, uh, I was uh, I, I was doing some reading uh, this past week, and um, this kind of falls under. You know, occasionally I kind of get on my lecture series here, and and remind folks of a historical precedent uh, that sounds similar to uh, things that are happening now. And I like to say, where have we been and what have we learned? Right. Well, I was reading about Albert Gallatin. Albert Gallatin. And then people are saying, who? (laughs) (laughs) Albert Gallatin was uh, Thomas Jefferson's treasurer. He came to call him that. He was the secretary of the treasury for 12 years under two different presidents. Yeah, it's unheard of nowadays. Uh, yes, and uh, then he was our ambassador to France. Uh, he very much wanted to be Secretary of State, but it never happened for him. He could not have ever been president uh, because he was born in Geneva, Switzerland. But uh, he was a financial genius. Uh, tried to undo many of the things that Alexander Hamilton had done. He was... Thomas Jefferson's right-hand man uh, in creating what they then called a Republican government. And one of Jefferson's main aims was pay off the national debt before you do anything else. If it means you've got to uh, 
decrease the size of the army and don't build the navy. We got to pay that debt off. And hmm. Albert Gallatin had quite a way of doing it. But uh, the point of this story is that Albert Gallatin outlived all his contemporaries. George Washington, John Adams, Thomas Jefferson, James Madison, Jim Monroe, they were all, uh, now Adams and, and Washington, of course, were on the other side of the fence. But Gallatin outlived all of the other cabinet members uh, and lived on till about 1849. He was uh, around 90 years old when he finally died. And he lived long enough to see the Mexican War. Mexico, that deal again. Mexico, huh? And Albert Gallatin was against the Mexican War. Said it would create way too much debt. Uh, and besides that, after we won the war, we would have to go and occupy Mexico. Huh. And it would, co- it would just create so much debt that it could not possibly be worth this effort. And, and it was an aggression, an aggressive war. We had very little reason for invading Mexico uh, in those days, other than we wanted to be bigger. And the response to Mr. Gallatin's position, and he wrote many papers and gave speeches against the war and, and warned about this very expensive occupation of Mexico. The administration of James Polk and most of the major newspapers in the country, particularly the ones in New York City, responded that Mexico ought to be able to pay for its own occupation. Huh. Interesting. Where have we been? And what have we learned? Uh, yeah. Think about that one for a while, friends, and then forget <laughs> about it, you know. <laughs> wow. But uh, food for thought for you. Uh, silly season upon us here, Michael, and uh, gee whiz, the advertising. You can't yeah. scarcely go five minutes without seeing a political act. Yeah, but this is how it is every year. Wow. It just, uh, and and some of them, you know, we have uh, uh, stations that analyze the spots to tell us whether they're honest or not. And we're finding multiple spots that don't even come close. Wait, the politicians are being dishonest? (laughs) How could that be? And I I wonder (laughs) how we're getting these things on the air and getting them cleared, you know, through broadcast standards. Um, Of course, that is presuming we have broadcast standards anymore. <laughs> well, for politics, they're allowed to lie. <laughs> yeah, you, they are. I, I know it. And uh, so just uh, with a lot of them, folks, you need to let it go in one ear and out the <laughs> other and make up your own mind. Well, listen, we've got a pause along the network line here. This is the Florida Roundtable. I'm Reagan Smith. And I'm Michael Yaffe. And we will continue our conversation following these messages. Wow, your flowers are gorgeous. What's your secret? It's no secret. It's bare advanced. You mean these blue bottles? Uh Uh-huh. I protect my beauties with all-in-one rose and flower care. It's insect and disease control plus fertilizer. Really? What's this 12-month tree and shrub protect and feed? Oh, I use it on my trees. It kills bugs for up to a year, plus it feeds. It's that easy. Hey, where are you going? To get my own. I want a great yard, too. Bear Advanced. Get more from the Blue Bottle. Always read and follow label instructions. Unexpected expenses can hit anyone, and many Floridians turn to small dollar loans to manage those temporary financial challenges. When using a small dollar loan, be sure to choose a state licensed lender. Remember that borrowers have rights under Florida law, including flexible repayment options if you can't repay on time. Make sure you understand the cost and terms of the loan before you borrow, and only borrow what you can afford to pay back. For more information, go to borrowsmartfl.com. This message is brought to you by the Florida Community Financial Services Association. In a world of tiny tomatoes and backyard pests, one man and his better half dig deep to save backyard gardens. Tony, stand by to upload expert videos. Already loaded, Tom. Wow, you're good. You're not so bad yourself. Tom and Joni McCubbin star in hisandhersgardening.com. Critics rave. Tom and Joni, they really grow on you. Two green thumbs up. Don't miss hisandhersgardening.com. Wow, your flowers are gorgeous. What's your secret? It's no secret. It's bare advanced. You mean these blue bottles? Uh Uh-huh. I protect my beauties with all-in-one rose and flower care. It's insect and disease control plus fertilizer. Really? What's this 12-month tree and shrub protect and feed? Oh, I use it on my trees. It kills bugs for up to a year, plus it feeds. It's that easy. Hey, where are you going? To get my own. I want a great yard, too. Bear Advanced. Get more from the Blue Bottle. Always read and follow label instructions. 
We are back. You're listening to the Florida Roundtable, a service of Florida's talk and entertainment networks. I'm Reagan Smith. And I'm Michael Yaffe. And Michael, we are off to sunny California, where we are joined by a former chairman of the California Republican Party. Tom Del Baccaro is with us. And uh, Tom, welcome to the Florida Roundtable. Thanks so much for having me on. Well, uh, for starters, uh, I'm going to ask you to take the first minute or so. Uh, Folks have seen your columns in many, many magazines. You've been on the television networks, the cable channels, and all that. But uh, there may be a few folks along our network line who are not familiar with you. And uh, so I wanted to ask you to go ahead and and, and take a minute and uh, tell us a little bit about your your personal background, your education, and uh, how you ended up as a a chairman of the California Republican Party. Sure. I'm originally from New York, where my father in the late 60s helped start the Conservative Party of New York and elected James Buckley to the U.S. Senate. We came out to California. I, I believe it or not, I'm a graduate of UC Berkeley. Back in the uh, in the early 80s, uh, became a lawyer and went back into politics. Uh, worked my way up from being a uh, party chairman locally. Worked my way up, uh, became the state party chairman, and be- began my writing career. And I've written for everything from the Washington Examiner, Forbes, Washington Times. USA Today, Politico, uh, a number of outlets, and a number of newspapers in California. Started my book writing career in 2007 with the New Conservative Paradigm, and then uh, a couple of years ago I wrote The Divided Era, which explains why ever larger government creates division. And uh, before we actually get into all of that, I wanted to mention uh, in various places and in, in some very nice circles, uh, you are being compared to the late Jack Kemp. And uh, for folks who don't know, Mr. Kemp was the quarterback of the NFL's Buffalo Bills, and he was a Republican congressman from Buffalo. He was Ronald Reagan, Secretary of Housing and Urban Development, and he was Bob Dole's candidate for vice president on the 19, uh, 1996 uh, Republican ticket. Uh, Jack Kemp was on this program on numerous occasions, Tom, and uh, I'm I was delighted to see uh, and and uh, your reaction when when folks uh, compare you to Jack Kemp. Well, it's uh, undeserving to be sure. I do concentrate on trying to get people to understand uh, how government can foster economic revivals, and that includes supporting a flat tax. Uh, I ran for U.S. Senate in California and was supported by Art Laffer, Steve Forbes, uh, Larry Kudlow, the head economist for the president now, and Stephen Moore. And uh, most recently, I worked uh, to help pass the uh, Trump tax package. And in fact, last November, I predicted that if it did pass, that we would get economic growth above 4% in the second and third quarters of this year. And as you saw recently, uh, economic growth was above 4% in the second quarter. And as we mentioned earlier, you are now in California. Tell us a little bit about how it, what it's like to be such a strong conservative living in such a leftist state, a leftist area. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. You know, California is huge, right? So there's millions of registered voters. There's over 5 million r- registered Republicans. So you can certainly find a lot of Republicans. But the reality is the state is run by a very far left wing, which is everything that would bother someone about the country is that doubled down in California. I mean, My most recent Forbes piece talks about the four reasons California is unsustainable. California has somewhere between 1.3 and and 2 trillion in debt, and there's really no way to pay that back. And they don't doesn't bother them at all. They keep going right along, uh, spending on new programs, 
without addressing the long-term debt problem. And they also, you know, their values and their their goals are way out there. I mean, of course, they've sued the president you know, three dozen times, spend countless money on that, but the roads are broken, the school's ineffective, and there's rampant crime in the cities and throughout, and that the press and, and the left ignores it because they're trying to create a social justice state where the laws protect but don't provide. Let me ask you this. Now, uh, Ronald Reagan spent eight years as governor of California and uh, won both times in, in a landslide, first time over uh, Pat Brown, the father of uh, Jerry Brown, uh, who was considered to be uh, one of the most liberal politicians and one of the most popular people uh, in California. And Ronald Reagan just crushed him. And and f- coming out of the, those years, uh, a lot of people might not remember, I'm sure you do, though, but would there were people like George Duke Majin, uh, and uh, Pete Wilson, uh, and the Republicans controlled that governorship for a long time. And you go way back, uh, one of the first people to come out of show business that persuaded Ronald Reagan to go into politics was George Murphy. But uh, in, the, in, in your analysis, what happened to that string of uh, long Republican dominance? Well, part of it has to do with uh, changing demographics. Uh, California has seen some of the worst of that, and millions and millions of of right-of-center people have left for greener pastures with lower taxes. So what you have is this huge influx of people from outside the country and then a huge influx, or I'm sorry, a huge outflow to other states. Slowly but surely, the uh, that demographic has changed. Joel Kotkin, the former Democrat and brilliant demographer, has talked about California being a place of the rich and public employee unions and the poor. And uh, part of the reality is that the, the media out here is what the national media is. It, it pounds on social justice issues, blames conservatism for everything. And uh, the swelling population of San Francisco and L.A. has elected ever more people to the legislature, and bit by bit, it, it has changed. Uh, the Republicans for themselves have failed to offer strong alternatives, even when they've problems have presented themselves, like water crisis or or issues related to agriculture or education. And the combination of those sort of things has, bit by bit, moved the state farther and farther left. Do you see any hope for the future? Is there any chance, maybe in the near future or just the far future, that conservatives can kind of take back the state? Well, if you look at Michigan as a model, Michigan, of course, was a strong union state, a manufacturing state here. what happened eventually is that the performance of the Democrat Party was so poor that uh, the opportunities presented itself, and the Republican Party provided alternatives and turned it back. Uh, the difficulty facing California is that so many people are leaving. I don't think Michigan had as much of an outflow of voters right of center that California is currently experiencing. So I don't think California in the short term is going to turn around. In fact, I think it's going to get worse. And the mounting debt is going to result in even higher taxes, which would push more people out of the state. Uh, I, I don't have a positive outlook for California. In fact, I've predicted big tax increases, including a and California becoming the first state in the country to have what I call as an asset tax, which is an attempt by the state to tax things like 401ks and the like. So I don't think the short term is very bright for California. You know, it, it's currently being funded by the growth of social media, but as we saw over the last month, that could be. Uh, a weak basis for doing it. And so once those 
industries move to other places, uh, I think you'll see California run aground. One of the one of the uh, wags recently uh, was looking at the uh, national debt, you know, and uh, we've heard all these things that the California ought to secede and become its own country, or maybe we should break it in half and have it, or, or even thirds. But uh, one political wag that I heard suggested that the way for President Trump uh, to solve our national debt would be to sell California. But <laughs> I, all right, tongue in cheek, but. Uh, before we have to get to our first break, and I, this is probably not fair to ask you this at this point, but maybe a compacted view, uh, uh, your take uh, on our national political situation at this time. Well, I think uh, historically, and this is what I write about in my book called The Divided Era, or one of the topics is the emergence of third parties. Third parties emerge on the on the scene when the two major parties are viewed as not solving problems. And although Donald Trump is in a third party, he certainly has a third party feel to him. Uh, parties, you know, California turned to Schwarzenegger, who was a failure, uh, didn't have Trump's resolve. And what Donald Trump is is an expression of a business as usual failing. And he's sort of an enigma to the establishment because he doesn't play by their rules, expresses frustration, but he's actually solving some problems. And he's using good methods in the sense of he's lowering the cost of doing business in the United States and businesses returning from abroad. The economy is moving smartly. And as we head into the midterms, you face the fact that in the television era, which is Eisenhower, only once has the president party not lost seats in the initial midterms. So it would be logical for House seats to be lost. The question is how much. And and whereas in the Senate, there are so many seats that are favorable to the Republicans, you should probably see the Republicans pick up a few seats And, Tom, we'll explore that a little bit further when we get into our next segment. But we are at that point where we have to take a pause along the network line. We must remind folks that this is the Florida Roundtable, a service of Florida's talk and entertainment networks. I'm Reagan Smith. And I'm Michael Yabby. Our very special guest today is Tom Del Baccaro, the uh, former chairman of the California Republican Party. And if you'll stay put, we continue our conversation following these messages. Your yard's days of being picked on are over. Thanks to the science of Bear Advanced Brush Killer Plus. It's penetrating formula specifically designed to kill hard-to-control brush like kudzu, poison ivy, poison oak, and wild berries. Roots and all. And the concentrate product even kills stumps. So your yard never has to worry about being bullied. Bear Advanced. Get more from the Blue Bottle. BearAdvanced.com. Always read and follow label directions. Unexpected expenses can hit anyone, and many Floridians turn to small dollar loans to manage those temporary financial challenges. When using a small dollar loan, be sure to choose a state licensed lender. Remember that borrowers have rights under Florida law, including flexible repayment options if you can't repay on time. Make sure you understand the cost and terms of the loan before you borrow, and only borrow what you can afford to pay back. For more information, go to borrowsmartfl.com. This message is brought to you by the Florida Community Financial Services Association. Florida's boating environment is always changing. New sunsets, new experiences that you won't find anywhere else on Earth. But one thing that never changes, boating while impaired by drugs or alcohol. It's illegal in the state of Florida. Boating under the influence will land you in jail, or worse, kill someone you love. It's just simply not a risk worth taking. Learn more about Florida's boating laws at myfwc.com. Brought to you by the FWC Division of Law Enforcement. Your yard's days of being picked on are over. Thanks to the science of Bear Advanced Brush Killer Plus. It's penetrating formula specifically designed to kill hard-to-control brush like kudzu, poison ivy, poison oak, and wild berries. Roots and all. And the concentrate product even kills stumps. So your yard never has to worry about being bullied. Bear Advanced. Get more from the Blue Bottle. BearAdvanced.com. Always read and follow label directions. 
Terrorist acts and shootings are often described as great tragedies. They are not. We live in a world so concerned with being politically correct that they're afraid to call evil what it is, evil. Man's sin nature is as old as the Garden of Eden. Many love to blame culture, poverty, or lack of education and opportunity as the problem. They may have a good or bad impact, but the big problem is sin. Acknowledging our sin nature will show us our need for a Savior who changes us from within. That Savior's name is Jesus. He came to die for the sins of all who will acknowledge their sin. Faith in Him strikes a mighty blow at evil. So quit calling man's evil acts a tragedy. They are evil and God hates it. Yet thankfully, He loves us in spite of our evil and sin. Jesus not only forgives us, but gives us the want to to overcome evil with good. This is Brian Wright, speaking right from my heart. All right, crew, let's get her dug. Honey, you want to give me a hand? I'm planting that tree, remember? No matter how large or small your digging project may be, no matter how urban or rural, you must always call 811 before any digging project. 811 is our national one-call number, alerting your local utility companies to come out and mark any lines they have near your dig site. You must call 811 at least two to three business days before any digging project so you can avoid hitting our essential buried utilities. This includes natural gas and petroleum pipelines, electric, communication cables, and water and sewer lines. So before you do this or this, make sure you do this. For digging projects big or small, make the call to 811. Brought to you by Common Ground Alliance. We are back from Pensacola to Key West and all points in between. You're listening to the Florida Roundtable, a service of Florida's Talk and Entertainment Networks. I'm Regan Smith. And I'm Michael Yaffe. Our very special guest today, Tom Del Baccaro. He's the former chairman of the California Republican Party. Uh, author extraordinaire. You've seen his columns in, in uh, all kinds of uh, publications and newspapers around the country. You see him on the television, and we are delighted to have Tom with us today. And th- Tom, when we went into that last break, you were talking about our, our national situation and kind of making some broad predictions, uh, and you were about to take a look at what you see happening with the campaigns for the United States Senate, and I wanted to let you go back and, and pick up that thought. Well, the Senate, of course, doesn't get reelected like the House in full every two years. You have it, it, it takes three elections for all of the seats to be up. And in this particular election, there's ten seats that Trump in red states that are held by Democrats, and there's five seats where Trump won by uh, fifteen or more points. And so what you see is an opportunity in normal cycles for the Republicans to pick up a seat here in places like West Virginia, where Trump won by over 30 points. Joe Manson's there. Uh, You have Joe Connolly in Indiana, Heidi Heitkamp in uh, North Dakota. These are strong red states uh, where Trump ran so very well. And so there's estimates that the Republicans pick up somewhere between two and six seats in the Senate. Uh, the House is, of course, different. All four, 35 are up, but there's really only about 60 that you could talk about and and about 30, which are really uh, in play. Again, in the television era, since Eisenhower only once has the Republican, I'm sorry, has the, the incumbent party not lost seats. That was in just after 9-11, in uh, under Bush 43, where the country was was unified, we of course don't have that unification. That's what I talked about in the divided era. So you can expect some seats to be lost. The question is whether the House will be lost. Now, when you, normally, the out party presents some practical alternatives to failures of the in party as a methodology to pick up seats. The best example ever of that was Newt Gingrich and the Republicans when they ran in the first off-cycle, off-year for uh, against Bill Clinton. And, of course, they picked up 54 seats and took the House back. 
And they did it by, in significant part, by providing these practical alternatives, the contract with America. In this cycle, the Democrats nationally are moving very hard to the left and not presenting any practical alternatives at all. Their entire rationale is just anti-Trump, which can work to a certain degree in, in places. We've seen that in some of the special elections. The question, though, is whether that works nationally, whether saying we should abolish ICE. Normally, people don't think the answer to crime is less police, or whether the socialism they're pushing will scare off independent voters and even some Democrats. We'll have to see. I, I, as I sit here right now, I don't see that the House will flip, but because because of those reasons and the fact that everybody knows that they would push for impeachment, even though they're trying to be quiet about it, but. This will be certainly one for the books. Trump defied pollsters and the like in the in the prior election. We'll see how they do this time around. You you just mentioned that you think um, some are thinking that they're going to push for impeachment. Uh, do you actually believe if they win the House that they will actually do that, or do you think it's a lot of bluster? No, I think they will. I think if Nancy Pelosi is there again, they will have the power of subpoena and. And, and look, they, there's no evidence that Trump has actually committed a crime. Uh, and we could go into the whole Mueller thing, which I'm a, uh, a virulent critic of what is going on. Uh, but I, I, I think the Democrats can't help themselves. I mean, to actually come up with uh, uh, Bernie Sanders and, and Nancy Pelosi as their leaders pushing the agenda they are, and I don't think they'll be able to help themselves. I wanted to mention, and I don't know how much of a chance you've had to take a look at it, you know, but Florida's Governor Rick Scott is term limited out, and he is running for a U.S. Senate seat uh, that has held, been held for many years by uh, Senator Bill Nelson. And uh, part of the deal is that uh, uh, Scott is campaigning on all the years that Nelson has been in office uh, in, in Florida. Uh, he will be into his 80s should he win this particular election. But our polls here are showing that uh, in all sections of the state, except for the southeast part of Florida, the, the Miami, Fort Lauderdale, West Palm Beach area, Governor Scott is actually ahead. Uh, and, and we are now less than 100 days from uh, the election. Uh, there is, uh, it seems that there's a possibility that uh, uh, the Republicans might actually pick up a seat in Florida. And I, uh, have you heard much about it out there? Yeah, absolutely. I expect that to be a pickup. This is a perfect example of a state that is center right and for which is benefiting from the uh, the better economy that's been brought out by the policies of the Republicans. You have, as you mentioned, a longtime incumbent who, you know, let's be honest, is a very dynamic at this point and continues to take positions that are to the left of, of where his electorate is. You have a, a fairly popular challenger in Rick Scott as executives go. And so this represents a, a good pickup opportunity, and I expect that to be one of the seats that the Republicans pick up in the Senate this fall. One thing that has happened a lot uh, this campaign season is, you know, President Trump has gone out and endorsed people and actually gone to their rallies to support them. And you have a lot of Republican candidates who are doing this mostly because it's the primary season, but they're showing their absolute support for President Trump. Do you think that will help the Republicans possibly retain retain the House, um, or do you think that could actually hurt them? Well, this could be a case-by-case case 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 sort of thing. Certainly, if, if President Trump went to West Virginia and supports the Senate uh, candidate against the Democrat in a state where Trump overwhelmingly won, I don't think there's any question. It's also possible that he could go to individual House seats where it wouldn't be 
as helpful. Uh, you know, it's, it, polling in this year is very, very difficult. The media polling can't be trusted because, by and large, it, it's biased and oversamples Democrats. The entire election of President Trump uh, was defied by the polling. No one predicted he would win Pennsylvania, and yet, in fact, he did. And his policies continue to defy normal politics. He still is appealing to Pennsylvania, Ohio, Wisconsin, and Michigan, Rust Belt states. So uh, predictions of of how Trump is doing uh, or how he will be able to help people are, are hard to measure. I mean, look, his his Rasmussen approval rating, which Rasmussen is really the only poll which can be trusted at this point, is five points higher than President Obama at the same period of time. And, of course, Trump faces a very hostile media, 90 percent negative, whereas Obama is probably 90 percent positive. So it, it's really hard to predict place to place where it is. The media is is more uh, the hyperbole and more virulent than ever. And that is scaring away voters, honestly. They see the alternative. We just had recently in Berkeley they, these violence again. Uh, those kind of th- That's what the left's about, the far left, is about these days. And, and that's not good advertising for the Democrats. The uh, and, and here in Florida, uh, Bernie Sanders has stuck his nose in here and endorsed a, a Democratic candidate for governor. Uh, the uh, mayor of Tallahassee picked up the endorsement from Bernie Sanders. Uh, we're rapidly approaching where we uh, are going to have to take uh, another break along our network line here, Tom. But uh, I want you to think about this, and perhaps we can come back and talk about it. And uh, you mentioned this, what a tough time that the president is having uh, with the media. And uh, I'm sitting here thinking about this because you go back across the years. We had a presidential candidate that had a big sign on the back wall of his war room that said, it's the economy, stupid. And, of course, that was Bill Clinton when he was running against Bush 41. And they ignored almost all the other issues and just hammered away on the economy. And uh, I'm, I'm going to want you to make some comments on that. But uh, at this point, we have to take a pause along our network line and remind folks that they are listening to the Florida Roundtable. It is a service of Florida's talk and entertainment networks. I'm Reagan Smith. And I'm Michael Yaffe. And our very special guest this day is Tom Del Baccaro, the uh, former chairman of the California Republican Party. We'll be back in a moment. Terrorist acts and shootings are often described as great tragedies. They are not. We live in a world so concerned with being politically correct that they're afraid to call evil what it is, evil. Man's sin nature is as old as the Garden of Eden. Many love to blame culture, poverty, or lack of education and opportunity as the problem. They may have a good or bad impact, but the big problem is sin. Acknowledging our sin nature will show us our need for a Savior who changes us from within. That Savior's name is Jesus. He came to die for the sins of all who will acknowledge their sin. Faith in Him strikes a mighty blow at evil. So quit calling man's evil acts a tragedy. They are evil and God hates it. Yet thankfully, he loves us in spite of our evil and sin. Jesus not only forgives us, but gives us the want to to overcome evil with good. This is Brian Wright, speaking right from my heart. If you're in the market for a walk-in tub, stop and listen to this. Now you can buy direct from the manufacturer and save more than 50%. You won't pay $20,000. You won't pay $15,000. You won't even pay ten. dollars Boca walk-in tubs are made right here in America by veterans. We're certified in virtually 100% of our tubs are made in the USA. A Boca walk-in tub is made from gel coat fiberglass. Other manufacturers use acrylic, which is basically plastic. We can deliver a walk-in tub anywhere in the U.S. and have it installed in no time at all. And everybody that calls right now can save $500 towards the purchase of a new walk-in tub. Call now and learn how to get a walk-in tub and save more than 50% off retail prices. Call 800-308-4917. 800-308-4917. 800-308-4917. Again, that's 800-308-4917. 
We are back. You're listening to the Florida Roundtable, the service of Florida's talk and entertainment networks. I'm Reagan Smith. And I'm Michael Yaffe. And our very special guest today is Tom Del Baccaro, the um, former chairman of the California Republican Party. Uh, you see his articles in magazines and newspapers all around the country. You've seen him on television. And Tom, we know you're a busy man, and we want to say thank you for spending all of this time with us today. The uh, I, as we ended that last segment, I was alluding back to the, the Clinton campaign of uh, 96, where he said, it's the economy, stupid. And uh, folks who look at what's going on will generally give the president good marks that the economy is getting better, where the unemployment is setting record highs and whatnot. But he's having, as you point out, he has one heck of a time with the media. So how how important do you see that playing into this year's elections? Well, we are in what I call the divided era, and I wrote about that in my book called The Divided Era, which your listeners can get at, at Amazon. Uh, and we aren't just about the economy anymore, yet that remains probably the largest single issue. People generally vote their pocketbook, and right now things are going quite well in that regard when you have record low unemployment for blacks. Hispanics and those and high school dropouts, they're generally happier when they are in control of their own economic future. That's what we're seeing right now. And when you contrast that with the, what the Democrats are saying, which is, okay, we're going to raise taxes again, and we want Medicare for all, which is would essentially bankrupt the, the nation, people don't want the alternative when the alternative will cost them money when they're just getting back into the job market. And so, yes, the Republicans have a big plum and a big uh, benefit with the, with the economy. But the, Democrat, the opposition is living off the anti-Trump resistance, and it, and it has an ideological appeal that doesn't care about the economy, that it, it cares about uh, ideological issues. So we're going to have to see what the strength of that is. And it's not clear. I, I think the polling is all over the place. The media polls are, are of course, biased and show uh, strength for the Democrats. Rasmussen shows much less. So we're going to have to see whether the economy still trumps pure ideology. But the, the divisions in America are growing worse all the time for very logical reason, which is the stakes are growing higher, and the Democrats want to be back in power to support their constituents, and the, the Republicans want to stay in power to support theirs. But the Republicans do have the headwind or the tailwind of the economy. We'll see if the Democrats can get people out. They're not using the historical formula to do that, but we'll have to see. You know, earlier you had mentioned that one thing that happens in eras like this is people go to a third party, and you had said, you know, Trump's not third party, but he's kind of a third party figure because he's not the typical Republican. Do you think President Trump has changed the Republican Party forever? No. I, I think politics, there is no forever. Uh, we, <laughs> he came That's about a good point. because of the size of government, government's ineffective to begin with. When you make it massive, it, it, it becomes even more ineffective. You know, if you take the grand sweep of thing, the federal government's $4 trillion large, and it's larger today spending-wise than when he got in. And so to say that, it, you know, a historian looking 30 years, 40 years from now, 100 years from now, looks at the fact that under Jefferson's term, the size of the federal government was 2 to 3% of the economy. It's 37% now. It'll probably be about that when eight years from now, given the natural growth of Medicare and Social Security. So I don't see things being changed forever. He certainly is like Ronald Reagan, uh, putting his finger in the dike, but the long-term prospects of, of the economy and 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 government and the parties is hasn't significantly changed. The uh, some historians and political wags will tell you 
Uh, we're hearing a, a, twir a whirling noise that kind of hovers over Washington, D.C. And, and in parts of Virginia, and, and that is actually Thomas Jefferson spinning in his grave uh, because, of course, the big deal of the first Jefferson term was to pay down the national debt. That if we had national debt, it would ruin the economy and ruin people's opportunity and hold back development of business and everything else. Uh, and wow, they've come a long way from Thomas Jefferson. But uh, in any event, <laughs> I, wanted to, I wanted to ask you, uh, uh, kind of go out on a limb here a little bit, and take a look in your crystal ball, do a little bit of a recap for us about what you, at, at this point in time, and, and we know that polls are a snapshot of any given moment and don't reflect what's going to happen in November necessarily. But uh, at this point in time, uh, give us your prediction uh, for what's going to happen in November. Well, as I predicted last November, and I was really the only national figure to do this, I expected economic growth of, of 4% in the second quarter. In the third quarter of this year, the second quarter, it has come true. I expect it to continue in the fifth, in the third quarter. Atlanta Fed says it's headed towards 5%. We'll have to see about that. That will benefit the Republicans sufficiently, in my mind, to allow them to hold on to the House. I expect them to pick up two to three seats in the Senate, including the Florida seat that you've that we've talked about. I, I think you'll see a second round of tax cutting in the next cycle that will improve the uh, fortunes of individual taxpayers which will add to a growing economy. And I think the Democrats will move ever farther left. They're moving too far to the left for independent voters, and they're playing into the hands of the reelection of Donald Trump. Now, uh, we want to remind folks, your uh, new book is The Divided Era, and they can find it on Amazon.com, or I presume they can go into any of their fine local bookstores around the state of Florida and ask for it. Yeah, absolutely. You can ask for it there or get it to Amazon.com. It's a simple premise in trying to get people to understand that division is not primarily the cause of individual players. It's not about lobbyists. It's not even about money in government. The, the larger government gets, the more decisions it makes, the more winners and losers it creates, and the greater the competition. The competition over $4 trillion in federal spending is a lot bigger than the competition over $100 billion. And so as government grows, that competition grows. As competition grows, division grows. The middle disappears. Party discipline raises. The higher the stakes, the greater the division. The stakes have never been higher, and as long as government grows, they'll continue to get larger. That's the basic premise. People need to understand that when they view our current divisions and stop playing, uh, blaming the individual players. The next Tom. Democrat president is going to be loved by Republicans, and the next Republican president is going to be loved by Democrats <laughs> right. under these circumstances. Tom, thank you so much for all your time this day. Unfortunately, we have to leave it there, but we'd love to invite you to come back and do this again. You are a very uh, insightful commentary. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm Reagan Smith. And I'm Michael Yappy. And Mike and I will be back with a brief closing thought following these messages. Wow, your flowers are gorgeous. What's your secret? It's no secret. It's Bare Advanced. You mean these blue bottles? Uh-huh. I protect my beauties with all-in-one rose and flower care. It's insect and disease control plus fertilizer. Really? What's this 12-month tree and shrub protect and feed? Oh, I use it on my trees. It kills bugs for up to a year, plus it feeds. It's that easy. Hey, where are you going? To get my own. I want a great yard, too. Bare Advanced. Get more from the Blue Bottle. Always read and follow label instructions. Hello, my name is Kevin McCarty. As Florida's former insurance commissioner, I have firsthand experience as to the importance of preparing for hurricane season. This year's promises to be an active one. Fortunately, there is an innovative new product available called Storm Peace, which provides prompt, hassle-free payments to cover insurance deductibles or coverages traditionally excluded from your homeowner's policy. I invite you to visit StormPeace.com and ask your agent if this is a right product for you.
Have you written a book? You can become a published author with Doran's Publishing, the nation's oldest publishing services company. Countless authors have trusted Doran's for nearly a hundred years to bring their book to the market. Our professional team will edit your text, design your book pages, and create an appealing, eye-catching custom cover. Plus, our authors benefit from a custom book promotion marketing campaign that makes your book available where people buy books, like Amazon and brick-and-mortar bookstores. So make this free call right now to claim your free author's guide to publishing. Don't wait another day. Take one step closer to realizing your dream of becoming a published author and seeing your name in print. You've already written a book, so the next thing to do is make this free call right now to Dorn's Publishing and get your free guide to publishing. Call right now. 800-485-6003. 800-485-6003. That's 800-485-6003. In a world of tiny tomatoes and backyard pests, one man and his better half dig deep to save backyard gardens. Tony, stand by to upload expert videos. Already loaded, Tom. Wow, you're good. You're not so bad yourself. Tom and Joni McCubbin star in hisandhersgardening.com. Critics rave. Tom and Joni, they really grow on you. Two green thumbs up. Don't miss hisandhersgardening.com. Employ Florida offers resources and services to help you find employment. Hi, Gary here. Employ Florida helped me improve my interview skills, plus write a great resume. I attended networking events with many employers and other industry professionals just like me. With the workshops and training found at EmployFlorida.com, I was able to land a great job in my field. Job resources. Real results. Hired. EmployFlorida.com. That's EmployFlorida.com. We are back. You're listening to the Florida Roundtable, a service of Florida's Talk and Entertainment Networks. I'm Reagan Smith. And I'm Michael Yaffe. And a uh, nice conversation there with Tom Del Baccaro, the um, former state chairman of the California Republican Party, getting his input uh, nationwide and a look at what is going on here in Florida. Uh, and I think uh, a bit more optimist uh, than some of the analysts that I hear right here at home. You know, it takes a lot of guts to be the chairman of the Republican Party in California. Yes. So I give him credit just for that. <laughs> yeah, I, I do. You know, as I, I was asking him, I thought back across the years, and uh, they, the Republicans nominated several governors in a row and controlled yep. both Senate seats. The last of the big names was Pete Wilson, who even considered a presidential run and ended up getting uh, throat cancer which took him out of the picture. I like Pete Wilson yeah. a lot. He probably would have been my candidate. I mean, but, uh, yeah, I mean, just think but, that Ronald Reagan, top conservative president, won California when he ran for president. Yeah. That that would be impossible now if people I, just assume California is going to go Democrat. It's absolutely true. Uh, very quickly, Michael, you have some other venues uh, where folks can share yeah, with you. Yeah, follow me on Twitter at Beyond Reason R. Okay. That's a, a, and I think you'll like what you hear there. And, uh, of course, uh, we want to say thank you for your time this day. Mike and I always appreciate it when you have time to spend with us. I'm Reagan Smith. And I'm Michael Yaffe. We'll see you next week with another edition of the Florida Roundtable. You've been listening to the Florida Roundtable, a news and public affairs presentation of the Florida News Network. The views and opinions expressed during this show are solely those of the participants and not necessarily those of this station's management, ownership, or sponsors. Please email your comments to reagansmith at fnnonline.net.